we'll be doing a 30 minute yoga practice and you can join me. So we start with a simple warm up. We carry a lot of stiffness in our feet and it's nice to always uh, relax the feet and stretch them. Now we'll be going up on the toes. If you suffer from heel pain or foot pain, you can do this really slow and you may want to use wall support for this. So let's go. Come up and go down. Come up, go down. Let's try this two more times. Get your heels off the floor and then down once again. Heels up and down. Now we integrate with the arms. So bring your hands to the arms to the shoulder level. Raise your arms up over your head as you bring your heels up and then go down. Repeat once more. Inhale, come up. And gently exhale as you lower down. And now the lower body is warmed up. Now we will be going for the upper body. So I want you to do some spinal twists. Inhale and raise your arms to the shoulder level and twist from the right and look at your left fingers. So if you notice my right foot is on the toe and I'm looking at my fingers. Bringing the foot on the toe helps to twist the spine a little better and return. Come back, inhale and now twist from the right side and look at your hand and now my left foot is on the toe. Return. Inhale. Go to the first side. Exhale when you reach there. You can stay there and breathe once more or twice. Return. Repeat. And return. Slowly come back to the center. And now we turn forward and we go for side bends. So you can keep your hands on your waist and uh, get the right arm over your head. Left hand remains on your waist and bend to the side. Keep your upper arm straight and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six. Slowly return and switch. Go to the other side. Try keeping your arms straight. Four, five. So when we're doing this, we're contracting on one side of the abdomen and stretching on the other. It's a very nice stretch for the sides. Also helps to stretch the hip joint. Now come back and we do a back bend. So stand with your feet together and your hands in the small of your back. So the palm is in the curve of the lower back here. Fingers are pointing down, thumb is also pointing down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, push your midsection forward and hold. Keep looking at the ceiling. And return. When you come back, try to pull your abdomen slightly in. You can repeat this again with me. So I can stand sideways this time. And let's go. Now, if you suffer from spondylosis, do not look up, look forward. Eyes are looking forward if you suffer from spondylosis. And then you return. Come back, pull your abdomen in, finish your couple of breathing cycles. So if you notice, we are trying to do the warm-up in every possible direction for the body. And now we will be going for shoulder rolls. So stand with your feet comfortably apart. Bring your, shrug your shoulders forward. From here, from this forward position, you'll be raising your shoulders up to the ears as you inhale and then squeeze them back. Shoulder blades are squeezing together in the upper back right here and then drop them down. Repeat. Inhale, come up. Take them back. Squeeze shoulder blades together. Return. Now we do the reverse. Take the shoulders back from the back. Bring them up and go down. Repeat once more. Shoulders taken back. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower down. Now we always end with the forward row, the first row. So bring your shoulders forward, come up as you inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together and slowly and gently drop them down. When you do this, you immediately feel an opening in your shoulders. So we have addressed the feet, we have addressed the midsection, we have addressed the spine, we have addressed the shoulders. And now we will take this warm up to the legs, uh, to the neck, sorry. And drop your chin down. 
Look up at the ceiling. Once again, slowly go down. Try to make contact with the chin with the collarbone. It may not be easy if you have a double chin, but you can try. Keep on pushing, make that effort. And once again, look up. So both these movements, looking down and looking up, help to stretch the neck. So now, in this case, the anterior of the neck is getting stretched and the back of the neck is getting contracted. Slowly come back. Now, we, this is called the neutral position. From here, we drop the chin down once again and take your chin on your collarbone, go to the right. Look over your right shoulder and then return and go left. Come back. So this was a sideways movement and uh, now we also bend the neck to the right. So this is different from what we did previously. Now we are bringing the right ear to the right shoulder, bend to the side. Keep on lowering your head down and then return and go to the other side. It's a very nice stretch for the side of the neck. Now my left ear is towards my left shoulder. I'm stretching to the right side of the neck and return. So the, now the neck is also stretched and the entire body is warmed up and stretched. So we should never do yoga on a cold body. Now we will be starting with a very simple breathing practice. You can stand with your hands together. We'll be saying a mantra. So inhale. And say Om with me. Let's go. Inhale again. Om. Repeat again. Om. So we inhale and then we attach the mantra Om, we say Om and we try to prolong it along with the exhalation. We focus on the A uh part of the Om, the U and the Ma. So the Ma mm, sound is the longest, so you, that's how you uh, slowly build your lung strength. Alright, so let's go now. We will be doing some more standing poses. So I would like you to join me, come to the front of your mat. Inhale and take your arms up and then slowly start bending down and bring your hands on your shin. This is Ardh Uttanasana. It's a very good stretch for all of you. You'll be bringing your buttocks directly over the heels. So avoid the swaying back. Now, you consciously move a little forward and buttocks are over the heels, hands on the shin, fingers are pointing down, then you look forward. So you get a curvature in your lower back. I'll be turning and showing this to you. Watch this. I'm avoiding the swaying back. From here, I've brought my buttocks a little forward. And I'm pushing the tailbone back. I'm extending my neck forward. And I'm getting a curvature in the lower back. This is a very good position for your spine. It corrects a lot of spinal defects. Now we have to relax the stomach muscles towards the floor and breathe in and then breathe out. We finish four breathing cycles here. Breathe with me. One, two, three, four. This is very good for you. It's Ardh Uttanasana, a very good stretch. Now in, in a more intense stretch of this version, you will be putting your hands down and taking your head down towards your knees. But we are not doing this, this is a beginner level. So we kept it at this level, Arvita. Now to come out of it for people who have back pain, I want you to bend your knees, come back up, take your arms over your head and then release. Now we'll be doing one round of Surya Namaskar. So all of you can join me. Come to the front of your mat 
and get your hands forward, take them up and bend back. Inhale. This is Hastutanasana. From here, stretch your upper body towards the ceiling and then go down, maintaining that stretch. Take your hands down. Bring your hands on either side of your feet, like how I'm showing. Tuck your face towards your knees. Exhale. Bellies look forward and take your right leg back. Inhale. Now, this is the 12 step Surya Namaskar. If you're a rank beginner, then you should try the Surya Namaskar, which I've shown in another video, which is called the Progressive Surya Namaskar, where we put the knee down and we keep the steps very simple. So this is your inhalation position. It's Ashwa Sanchanasana. In this pose, we try to look up. Then you take your left head back. Your head down. This is downward facing dog. Adho Mukho Swanasana. It's a rejuvenating pose. Feel the stretch in the back of your legs. Now from here, come to plank. Inhale. The core has to be engaged. Drop your knees down. Take your buttocks slightly back and then watch me as I widen the elbows and bring the chin down. This is Sathrat Pranam position, eight body parts on the floor. From here, inhale and lift up. Hands are flat on the floor, elbows can be tucked towards the ribs and chest, shoulders, belly button is off the floor. One, two, Legs are straight. Three, four. This is Bhujanga, the cobra position. It's an inhalation position. From here, you curl your toes and then lift up into Adho Mukha Swanasana again. One, two, three, four. Now bring your right leg forward. So you swing the right leg and try to bring it forward. If you're a beginner, you may not be able to bring the leg so much forward. Your leg will be back, but never mind. You have to try to practice and Get it right. It happens when you improve your flexibility. This is Ashwa Sanjalanasana. Breathe in and then left leg forward. Tuck your face to the knees. Breathe out. This is Padahastasana. Hands to the feet. Now we will be coming up. So look forward and bring your arms up over your head. Bend back as you inhale and release. Repeat with me on the left leg. One. Inhale. Two, forward fold, exit. Bend knees, look forward. Left leg back, horse position. Let's try keeping the knee down on this side as I was saying. Position. Now take your right leg back and exit. Here in this position, tailbone has to be high, crown of the head towards the floor, your face towards the knees. And then come to Plank. Inhale. This is Dandasana variation. Core is engaged. Buttocks are tight. They're helping to stabilize the abdomen. Thighs are stretching. And then you drop your knees down. Go back slightly and bring your chin down. Exhale. Hold. Come up into Bhujanga. Now if you could not do the previous version of Bhujanga, you can keep your upper body at this level. So here I'm very low. Only my chest and shoulders are off the floor. My belly button is on the floor. I try looking up. You can do the same. Curl your toes and lift up into inverted V again. Exhale. Downward horse position. Now bring the right leg forward. Both feet are in one line. Big toes are touching. Heels can be slightly apart. Face to the knees, exhale. It may be difficult to keep your hands on the floor. That's fine even if you're here. Just make that effort. And then from here, bend your knees and come up. Take your arms over your head. Inhale as you bend back. And release. Bring your hands together. This is Namaskar Mudra, the 12th position of Surya Namaskar. The very important position helps to work on your chest muscles. Bend your knees and take your left leg out. Now your right toes are pointing towards me. So I'll move some more back so you can see my foot. My toes are pointing forward. And then you bring your arms to the side 
and both legs are straight and then you bend laterally to the right. Place your right hand on your right shin. Tendency to collapse forward, you try to lift it up. Look up. So your left arm is stretching up towards the ceiling. Feel the stretch on the left side of your body. Contraction on the right. This is Trikonasana triangle position. Now from here, lower, bring yourself up by lowering the left arm and bringing the right arm up. Now we go for Vibhadrasana on this side since we are already in that position. You can bend your right knee. So the knee has a tendency to flop forward. We bring the knee directly above the ankle joint. So both arms are to the side and you look over right shoulder. Allow your chest to open some more. Both your hands are pulling away in either direction. So also stretching your biceps. And then you release. Come back, lower the arms, straighten out the knee and step forward. From here, you, you'll be taking a step back with your right leg. Now, your left toes are pointing towards me and we go for three bone out on this side. So, your left toes are out at 90 degrees, right toes are in at 30 degrees. Alignment is heel, left heel to the right arch of the foot. I'm mirroring you, so my... Left is your right. Now you'll be bending sideways and bringing your hand, left hand down on your left shin. And at the same time, take the right arm up. Look up at the hands. Allow the collapsing in the body to be avoided. So you pull up and look up. Open out the chest. Both hands in one straight line. Keep on breathing as you hold the pose and come out of it. Now if you have a knee issue, I must tell you that you have to bend the knee when you come back out of a pose like this. Now we will be bending the left knee and we avoid the knee to collapse in the front. Bring the knee out and keep your upper body straight and this is Vibhadrasan. We look over the shoulder. This is a strengthening pose. Virbhadra was a warrior. This is Virbhadra too. And we release. Release the pose. Slowly and gently come back up. And turn your body forward. And step back. Now you can sit down on the mat. So this is half an hour class. So you will be Sitting down and doing one pranayama and then we meditate as well. Sit with your back upright. Your spine straight, your body relaxed, your hands in this mudra, thumb and index together. Palms can be down or up, facing up. This is Dhyana Mudra. Now we'll be going for Ujjayi. It's called the ocean's breath. So you'll be making a sound like the wave of an ocean as you breathe in and same sound when you breathe out. It's also similar to the sound that you would have made when you for a child and you wanted to fog a mirror, you would go It's the same sound that I want from you, but you will be doing this with your mouth closed. Alright, so let's try this. So you can try to constrict your epiglottis inside the throat. If you're not getting it, you can roll your tongue backwards slightly and then inhale making the sound and exhale making the same sound. Let's try it. Alright, so we will now add a count to this. So let's try to breathe in for three counts and hold for two counts and breathe out three counts. Let's try it.
breathe in three, hold two, breathe out three. Repeat. Continue for another two, three times. You can even try breathing in for four counts, holding two, breathing out four. Let's try. So this is the Ujjayi breathing. It's also called the victory breath. It's a very good breathing practice and um, helps to control your thyroid. It also helps to increase your metabolic rate and therefore leads to weight loss. It's also good for people who have hypertension. So it's a fairly safe practice for everyone. You, you should avoid this only if you have a heart condition, in which case you should not do the holding count at all. You can still softly breathe in and breathe out without retaining the breath. So there's no kumbhaka, only an inhalation and an exhalation. All right, so now we will be going forward and I would like you to do one sitting pose with me and um, you can extend your legs out. And fold your right leg. So your right kneecap is facing the ceiling and your right foot is placed near the left calf muscle. Now inhale and take your left arm up. You stretch your left arm up towards the ceiling. We are going for Vakrasan. It's a twisting position. Now you'll be taking this left arm on the outside of the right leg like this. And when we bring the arm here, the knee has a tendency to flop in. So we have to work with the knee pulling outward so that the knee always faces the ceiling. All right. And then you take your left hand and place it on the floor. Sorry, your right hand and place it on the floor behind you and look over your right shoulder. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. Keep on breathing normal. And come back. Always come back with an inhalation. Raise the arm up straight and lower the arm down. So the in yoga, the movements are very defined. Now we sit up because it's a very conscious practice. Now let's inhale and take the right arm up. Left knee is bent, left kneecap is towards the ceiling, left foot is near the right calf. Stretch one, two, three, four. Now we will take this arm on the outside of the leg. And as I said, we have to push the knee out, the kneecap always faces the ceiling. And now take your free hand, place it on the floor. I usually place my fingertips on the floor that helps to maneuver the shoulder. So look back. And the leg on the floor, we give it some work to do. Instead of keeping it relaxed, we flex the toes. So point the toes towards you. This helps to at the same time, stretch the muscles of the extended leg. The Back of the leg muscles are stretching, hamstring of the right leg is stretching. You're twisting your spine as well as your abdomen. And return. Come back, take the arm up, lower it down. So we've finished one sitting posture as well. And now you can cross your legs again and sit in a cross leg position, either Sukhasan, like how I'm sitting, or you can go for Vajrasana with the legs stuck under you. If you want, we can try that. Feet, knees together and your feet slightly apart. Let me show it to you from the side. Feet are slightly apart and you sit on your heels. Now, if this is difficult and your knees are very tight, you may want to place a cushion under between your calves and your thighs and try to sit. In Vajrasana, we sit with the back straight. It's called the Thunderbolt position. Very good for digestion. Now we'll be meditating. So you can sit upright in any comfortable sitting positions, cross leg or Vajrasana or Siddhasana or Padmasana or Padmasana or you can even sit in a chair with your back straight. Look at your breathing. Now 
Notice when you breathe in, your stomach expands. As you breathe out, your stomach slightly goes in. We can always feel this breathing once we have done some yoga. It's the correct way to breathe. Usually babies breathe like this, but as we grow older, we tend to forget this breathing pattern. So breathe in, relax your stomach, breathe out, pull your abdomen slightly in. This is happening because the stomach going in pushes on the diaphragm, diaphragm pushes, goes up and pushes on the lungs and you exhale. Reverse of that happens when you inhale. Lungs are expanded, diaphragm goes down, stomach comes out because it's relaxed. I always like to meditate focusing on the breath. Focus on only the breath, nothing but the breath, the incoming breath and the outgoing breath. It's important to keep the back straight, body relaxed. Slowly open your eyes. Now we'll be lying down on the floor and you can lie down on your back, arms by your side, knees are bent slightly. The simplest abdominal exercise we can do is a cycling with opposite legs and knee. So you will pain, then you will only be cycling with your legs. In that case, your arms will be by your side and you will cycle just with the legs. So this is good for everyone to do. It mobilizes the knee and it also works on your abdominal muscles. And those of you who are fine with their neck, no pain and discomfort in the neck can raise the head and shoulders off the floor like how I'm showing. And now you will be bringing your right elbow towards your left knee. When you do that, you stretch your right leg away from you. Come back and switch. Exhale. When you make contact, elbow to the knee. That's when you're exhaling. Any practice in which we consciously work on the movement with the breath is, becomes yogic. So in this case, we are exhaling when we make contact, exhale, exhale. Inhalation is happening on its own. You're making the effort, exhale, exhale. So this becomes yogic. Now you can lower your upper body down, relax. Palms are by your side, knees are touching, feet can be apart. Just take a breather and relax. Next, we'll be going for the bridge pose. It's very good for everyone. So you can bring your heels a little closer to you. Maintain the knees and the feet about eight inches apart. Your hands by your side, arms on the floor, and lift your midsection off the floor. Keep on raising your midsection up so your chest is also coming up and the chest is moving closer to the chin. Keep the buttocks engaged, work on the buttocks, tighten them and lift higher. When you feel you can go no more, breathe normal. This is the simplest bridge position, Setu Bandhasan. Those of you who have practiced this before can Tuck the hands under the waist and place the elbows on the floor. In the final position, you can also stretch your legs out. And we go back to the basic version, which we started with, 
So pelvis is off the floor, buttocks are tightening, and then slowly come down and release. So this was for the back, helps to relieve the lower back. Now you extend your legs out. And roll over on your stomach for one back strengthener. So let's go. Extend the arms out. Pour it on the mat. Lift the opposite arm and leg. So my left arm, right leg is lifted up. The leg at the back is straight. Look at your fingers. Try to keep the hand and the foot equidistant from the floor. So if the hand is about eight inches away from the floor, the leg should also, the foot should also be eight inches. Slowly go down, change. Inhale and come up. If you notice the leg at the back, I've kept my knee straight, my toes are pointing away, and my hand is lifted up, equidistant from the floor. Keep the upper arm straight and close to the ear. So, variation of Shalabhasana, slowly and gently. Lower the head down, relax. After a few seconds of rest, you can roll over onto your back for Shavasana. Take your feet to the outer edges of the mat. Right toes flop to the right side. Left toes flop to the left side, your hands by your side, placed a little away from the body. This is Shavasan. It's a relaxing pose. Lowers your heartbeat. So your heart rate comes down, your blood pressure comes down. Shavasana improves your circulation, relaxes your joints. It's a very good practice to do after yoga. You must do five minutes, at least five minutes of Shavasana. This is the only pose in which your neck also gets to relax. Your shoulders, your upper back, your spine are all resting in this pose. It's very important to relax and rest the muscles. Eyes remain closed throughout Shavasana, so your eyes get a good rest. Even your tongue gets a rest. Feeling becomes regularized. Notice your abdomen rising as you inhale and subsiding as you exhale. It's a great way to de stress and relax. Even in the middle of a day, you can lie down for 5 to 10 minutes 
flat on your back if you're exhausted and feel refreshed. Now we'll be bringing the feet in. So when we come out of Shavasana, we wriggle the toes and the fingers for a few seconds. Then we inhale and bring the feet together, bring the arms by the side. And now you will be inhaling and raising your right arm over your head and fold your knees. Now you roll to the right and keep your left hand on the floor. Then you push the floor with both your hands and come up to sitting. And you can sit with your legs crossed or in Siddhasana like this with one foot tucked between the thigh and the calf of the other leg. So my toes are tucked in and then you place the heels on top of each other and you pronate this foot so the heel is facing upwards and you come back and you relax with your eyes closed. Feel refreshed. And then you rub your palms together. And place them on your eyes. Relax your eyes. Then you release. Thank you for attending. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.